All right, this is the second Groby lecture. So this one will be about the transportation problem. So again, in the starters folder, I'll click on transportation problem. Okay, so if you remember, we're trying to figure out um, how to transport drum sets from three factories to 20 different cities, kind of the demand points. So each of these factories, we say produces 2,000 drum sets a year, and we're shipping to those 20 cities, and the, the total demand over all 20 cities is 6,000 sets. So actually, all of these factories should be, uh, their output should all be used. There's no kind of slack in these constraints. Okay, and our objective is to meet all of those demands and minimize transportation costs. And we suppose that the transportation cost is always going to be uh, a nickel per pallet per mile. Okay, so I've I've done the the hard work for you. So I've created a supply dictionary and a demand dictionary. And so I guess I should probably run those cells, and then we can kind of print that information. So for every node I in the set of I nodes. So I'll do supply dot keys. A supply at I is supply of I. Okay, 2000 for each one of them. Then I can do the same thing for the demand. So for, I'll say J in demand.keys. The demand at J is demand of J. Okay, so it says, let's see, Austin, Texas demands 500. In our dictionary, and that's indeed what we print. Okay, so it seems like everything's good there. All right, um, I also gave you the distance dictionary. So for every one of these supply nodes to every one of these demand nodes, I tell you what the, the distance in miles is. And I think I, I got this from probably Google Maps or something like that. So I think these are um, correct. Okay, so I'll run that cell, get that distance dictionary, and it is yeah, distance in miles is the name of it. So let's just check that. So the distance in miles from, let's say, Oklahoma City to, but to Austin. I'll just copy that. 388. This should be square brackets. Okay, let's check that. 388. Cool. Okay. So for what we're about to do, it'll be convenient to have something representing the kind of the set of supply nodes, which I might call the ship drums. So this is essentially the set of keys in the supply dictionary. So this is key for key in supply dot keys. Okay, the ship froms. Maybe I'll run that. Okay, so our supply nodes are OKC, Boulder, and Nashville. And I can do the same thing for the ship twos. E for key and demand dot keys. Maybe I'll put a who's our ship twos. 
Okay, Austin, Texas, Baltimore, Charlotte, and so on. Double check the ordering on that. Okay. So in the demand dictionary, the last two keys were San Francisco and then San Jose. Down here, San Francisco, San Jose. Okay, that all checks out. Okay. So I think we've got all of our data written. So now we can start building the model. So I'll import Roby again. I'll also import. Okay, like before, I'll create my model. And then I'll create my variables. And I'm creating this transportation variable for every ship from and every ship to. Well, I'll be, I, I could define these as integer variables or continuous variables. I guess ultimately, the interpretation here is that xij is the number of pallets or drum sets. We're supposing that one drum set fits on a pallet, so number of pallets shift from i to j. So arguably, this should be integer, and if you wanted to do that, this would be Now, it, it turns out that the model that we're about to write also has a totally unimodular constraint matrix. So we're going to get integrality for free. So I could just define it like this, which the default variable type is continuous. So I'll, I'll just do that. OK. So my objective is going to be to minimize that transportation cost. So I'll again do m dot set objective. Again, there are two arguments. The first one is what we're optimizing, and the second one is the objective sense, which again is minimize. And over here, I'm going to be summing a lot of things. So it's going to be kind of like cost times x. So first I'll write x. This will be xij. This is for, and I think I could do this a couple different ways. Uh, one way I could do is to say for I in ship drums and for J in ship twos. That would work. Um, I think I could also define this in terms of that distance dictionary. Let me try that. So I, J, and maybe I would have to do this. in miles dot keys and then I would have to multiply x by something related to the distance. So x is the number of pallets um, but we're trying to get cost which we assume is related to the number of miles. So it's the number of miles from i to j times x. So this would be the number of pallet miles for our shipments. But somehow we need to convert that to dollars, which we can multiply by some cost parameter C, where C is at five cents pallet per mile. Okay. I think this will, will work, but let's double check. Okay. Didn't seem to complain. Okay. And um, so next up, we'll add our constraints. So first, let's add the supply constraints. So we'll do m dot add constraints. And don't forget that s there because we're going to add a constraint for every supply node. We're going to do it all in one line. So. We're going to 
write that something is at most supply of I. This is for all supply nodes. So for all I in, uh, I could do sums. Um, that would work. Or maybe I should say, yeah, I think ship, ship froms will work. Okay. Um, on the left hand side, I should write out how much am I shipping out of I? So this is going to be the sum of some xijs, and we're summing over all of the different j's that I will ship to. So this is for all j and ship. Okay. Does it? Let me run that still. Okay. And it indeed says we've got a constraint for supply node OKC, for supply node Boulder, and for supply node Asheville. All right. Um, let's add demand constraints. Okay. So for each of these demand constraints, we're going to say that we get exactly equal to the demand at each of our demand nodes J. All J and ship twos. So then I'll have to express how much is no J receiving. That's for summing all the XIJs over all of the different ship froms I. Okay, so we should have uh, 20 different constraints here for each of the 20 demand nodes. So if I run that, It'll list out all of the 20 different ship twos. Now, if this is kind of tedious, if I don't want it to print all of that, I can just do m dot update right here. OK, um, and I think because I did that twice, I've added all of these constraints twice, but better. Um, so now I can solve. And maybe I maybe I'll go back and run all of these cells again, just so I don't have those duplicate constraints or redundant constraints. Okay, so I should have those transportation variables x i j for every choice of i and j. There are three choices for i and twenty choices for j, so that gives me my sixty columns or sixty variables. And then I have apparently 23 rows or 23 constraints. So we had three supply constraints and 20 demand constraints. So that checks out. And then there's also something here called non zeros. So if you. Um, if you're writing out an LP like. Minimize C transpose X. Object to. Like A X B. As we will write X non negative. Okay. So if this is your the LP that you're solving, the number of non zeros is referring to this matrix A. And it's just reporting the number of cells or entries in that matrix that are not zero. And the, the reason this is important is that any good LP or IP solver isn't storing this full matrix A. It's only storing the parts where it's not zero. And the reason is that most of the time when you write out LPs in practice, this matrix A is very sparse. So in large supply chain type problems, this matrix A will be, you know, 99.99% of it is going to end up being zero. So instead of storing all of these zeros in a matrix, the, the computer or group is only going to store the parts that are not zero. OK, so really the, the size of this LP, I think it, the three good measures for its size are the number of variables, the number of constraints, and the number of non zeros in this matrix, which is why Gurobi reports here the number of non zeros. And I think the, the reason that we have 120 non zeros is because each of our 60 variables is appearing twice in our constraints. So 
each one of these xij variables will appear once in the supply constraint for i and also once in the demand constraint for j. So that's why we have 120 non zeros here. Okay. Um, and it looks like it took two iterations of, uh, I don't know if that's primal simplex or dual simplex. In any case, it, it, it solved this LP quite quickly. Um, and it looks like, maybe I'll go ahead and print the objective value. The total transportation cost is m dot objective value. So it looks like it's about $200,000, which if you take that um, per drum set, the m dot objective value divided by 6,000 drum sets, So $33 per drum set, that seems not too crazy. OK. Um, then we can also print how many drum sets we're shipping from each of the ship froms to each of the ship twos. So for every I in ship froms and for every J in ship twos, we can say that I to J ship J dot X again do the dot X because we're having the value of that variable that many drum sets or pallets. Okay, so from Oklahoma City to Austin, we're shipping 500 drum sets. So intuitively, that makes sense. Um, Oklahoma City is the closest producer to that demand point. So that transportation cost is smallest for that leg. And I think Austin, Texas demanded 500 drum sets. So it's getting all of them fully from Oklahoma City. So yeah, from Asheville, it's zero. And from Boulder, it's also zero. Okay, so this works, um, but you'll see here that we're printing a lot of information. Most of the variables in this optimal solution are taking a value of zero, and maybe that's not super helpful to print out all of these zero values. So let's print the exact same thing, but now just the non-zero parts. So we can say if uh, ij dot x is bigger than zero, and maybe for floating point reasons, I'll just say if it's bigger than 0. 0.5, we'll go ahead and print that. Okay, so that's a little more concise. So it looks like Oklahoma City is shipping to six different locations. Boulder is shipping to one, two, three, four, five, six. Also six locations. So then that means Asheville should be sent shipping to the other eight locations. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it looks like it's actually shipping to nine locations. So we have a total of 21 different types of origin destination pairs, even though we have um, only 20 demand points. So I think what must be going on is that we're shipping, I guess one demand node is getting shipments from two supply nodes. So let's see if we can figure that out. So maybe we could look at all of the ship froms and then just count how many ship twos are sending to us. So we could say
number of ship twos is the sum one for i in ship twos if we're sending more than zero drums. So this, we're looking at a particular demand point J and we're trying to figure out how many supply nodes I ship to it. If this is bigger than one, we're shipping, maybe I'll say, J is receiving shipments from this many supply nodes. Doesn't like something that I did here. Maybe I got these backwards. Let's see. Oh, this should be ship twos. This should be ship froms. This should maybe this should have been ship froms. My mistake. Okay. So it looks like Chicago was receiving shipments from two nodes. And let's check that out. So I don't see here. So Boulder to Chicago, there's 100 drum sets. And then Asheville to Chicago, there's 300 drum sets. OK, so that all seems to be right. OK, 